Hi, welcome to Using Job Boards Effectively Without Wasting Your Time. I'm Greg Horowitz, Director of Product Development at MediaBistro.com. I wanted to do this tutorial because I felt like a lot of the conventional wisdom surrounding job boards tends to be between two different extremes. On the one hand, there are plenty of job seekers who get frustrated because they spend all their time on job boards and never get any responses to the ones they apply to. On the other hand, a lot of career experts give out advice that says don't waste time on job boards, focus on networking. The truth is that most of us follow, fall somewhere in between. Job boards are a very important tool, but obviously they're not the only tool. So the question is how to use them most effectively and use your time effectively. So here are some of the reasons that job boards can be a very effective tool as part of your job search. For one, they help you learn about confirmed job openings. You don't just have to hope that you talk to somebody at the right moment who happens to know about a job opening. Here are companies that are coming out and telling you that they're hiring for something. Second, while you should absolutely have companies that you're targeting, there are also maybe other companies that you would want to consider that you might not know about. And job boards are a good way to learn about those companies. Not only do you learn about the opportunity itself, you also get key information about the job. A company might tell you what they're looking for. They might tell you about the company both directly in the, in the about company section and indirectly in the tone of their job board, which should give you some insight into how they operate. In some cases, they'll tell you specifically who the hiring manager is, which is a really key p piece of information. And in some, unfortunately, rare cases, they'll tell you what the salary is, which obviously is helpful too. The key, again, is to spend your time wisely. How do you spend your time wisely? Here's some step-by-step -step advice on how you can make the most out of your job board experience. At the start, though, I want to emphasize that one of my pet peeves about job search advice is that there are frequently too many and too strict rules. Now, I understand why people like to hear them, because a job search is really confusing, and rule, uh, frameworks can be really reassuring. But the fact is, no rule holds in every case, and sometimes you just have to use your judgment. What's appropriate in one situation might not be in another. So throughout this talk, I'll outline some principles, but you should always be prepared to break them, depending on the situation. So the first step in using a job board is to find jobs. And your goal here should be to view every potential job that fits your criteria. One way to do that is through aggregators, like Simply Hired or Indeed. They can save you the trouble of having to go to multiple job boards by bringing them all together in one place. Aggregators are a really valuable tool, but you shouldn't assume that they're comprehensive. For example, you won't find a Media Bistro job through Indeed or Simply Hired because we don't let them aggregate our jobs. Also, because they're pulling from lots of different sources, you don't always know the reliability of those sources. And you may find that jobs uh, that come to you through Indeed or Simply Hired may contain outdated, expired, or inaccurate listings. Second, niche job boards. Now, obviously, I'm biased, but niche job boards are a really great way to focus your job search and lower your signal and noise ratio, both from your perspective in the sense that you have to spend less time sorting through ir irrelevant listings to find the ones you're interested in, and from the employer's perspective, which is ultimately to your benefit, because an employer knows that if they post in a niche job board, they're likely to get a lower volume of higher quality applicants, which means that your application is more likely to stand out versus one from another source. A couple tips on, on niche job boards. First of all, try to think of related fields that might overlap with yours. For example, if you're looking for a social media job, you could look at a media job board like Media Bistro. You could look at a startup job board, one for journalism or PR, something that might overlap even if it's not exactly the niche that you're focusing on. However, you should be aware that there are a lot of niche job boards out there, and the quality can really vary. One good tip. If you look at the bottom of the job board and you see that it's powered by Indeed, that kind of tells you that the employer may not, the uh, job board may not be focusing too much on populating their job board, and the jobs that you're going to see there are the same ones you could find through Indeed. So you might not want to spend as much time on those types of job boards. Corporate career sites are really best for companies that you already know you're targeting, and also any new companies that you hear about. That, that interest you, if you want to find out they're hiring, it's a good idea to go to their website and see what jobs they have listed. Obviously, the, the best attribute of those is if a company's posting a job on their website, there's a pretty good chance that they're hiring. Social media can refer to a few different things. It could mean following Twitter or Facebook feeds that post about jobs. It could mean searching for specific hashtags, like jobs or hiring or media jobs. 
or it could just mean following people who occasionally mention jobs that they know about. Now, it can be a great alternative source, but there is a high signal-to-noise ratio because there aren't a lot of niche social media job feeds, and you can't customize a search the way you could on, say, a job board. So it can be pretty hit or miss. That's why I recommend setting up email alerts or RSS feeds across all these different sources. Just make sure that you don't let inertia set in with your search terms. It's a good idea to check them once a month and make sure they're still delivering you relevant results. And here's a tip. You can set up an RSS feed for a Twitter account or for a Twitter search term. Just Google how to set up RSS feeds for Twitter. And try to find an RSS reader that delivers each feed item as if it were a message because you're going to want to delete a lot of the ones that aren't relevant and be able to save the ones that are to go back to them later. Okay, so now you've set up your search terms and you've found some jobs that you're interested in applying to. This tends to be a major friction point in the process. On the one hand, lots of job boards make applying easy, which leads to lots of applicants, which can overwhelm employers and result in the dreaded black hole where job seekers never hear back from them because employers are so swamped. On the other hand, I'm sure all of us have had that job that we totally planned on applying to, and then we just never got around to it. So I'm going to say something that's a little bit controversial and that you don't often hear from career advisors. Sometimes you're better off bashing off a relatively generic cover letter rather than spending too much time on it. Not always, though. First, you need to take a few minutes and really read through the job description and decide whether it's a good fit, this is a place you want to work, and this is a job that you can do. Second, think about how much you actually have to say about the company. If it's a company that you've been a fan of for years and you know exactly why you want to work there and you can talk about the, challenge, the challenges they're facing, you really want to get that enthusiasm into the cover letter. But if it's a company you don't know a lot about or in some cases it doesn't even tell you which company it is, don't spend a lot of time trying to come up with fake reasons why you're excited you're better off getting the application in because being at the top of the pile is a huge advantage when you're applying to any job. Now one question we get a lot is if I have a connection at the company should I still apply through the official channel? And I would say that in almost all cases the answer is yes. First of all HR prefers to have you in the system and certainly can't hurt to apply through multiple channels. Second of all, you don't know how long that contact is going to take to get back to you. And again, speed is really important. So you, can al you should always apply first and then work on your contacts. The one exception is if the contact you have is a recruiter, is a third-party recruiter. And the reason is, in those cases, they may not be able to eligible to get a commission from the company if you've already applied. So if you're already working with a recruiter, and you think that they can help you get in the door, it makes sense to talk to them first. Generally speaking, especially if you find a job through an aggregator or a job board that you've never heard of, it's a good idea to go to the original source and make sure that it's a legitimate job opportunity. Now, obviously, it's in my self-interest to say that that doesn't apply to Media Bistro, but the reason I'm saying that is because as I mentioned before, Media Bistro doesn't syndicate our jobs, and we don't syndicate other jobs onto our job board. So if it's something's on Media Bistro, that's a pretty good indication that, th that it's a legitimate job and that you can apply through our channel. There's a preliminary amount of research that you want to do before you send in your cover letter, but it doesn't need to be as comprehensive as the research you'll do, say, before you interview. For one thing, you want to find out who the hiring manager is. And you want to research the company, but you really only need to know enough to be able to say something interesting. Again, there'll be plenty of time to really dig into it later on. Now, if you have contacts within the company, at this point, your main goal is just, if you reach out to them, is to get inside information that you can use in your application. You'll worry about other referrals later on. I want to say something here about the use of games and gimmicks to help apply to jobs that you see posted. By games, I mean things like trying to use keywords to sneak past an applicant tracking system. 
I'm not going to say that you shouldn't customize your resume and cover letter based on things that you read in a job description. But it's worth keeping in mind that ultimately what you're trying to do is get hired by humans, not by machines. It's kind of like a blogger who spends all their time worrying about how to optimize their search engine traffic as opposed to just writing good content. And you want to spend your time writing a good cover letter and having a good resume rather than trying to fool a machine into hiring you. And as far as gimmicks, I'm sure we've all heard great stories about social media campaigns or quirky applications or infographics and video resumes. And again, I'm not going to say you should never do it, but they're probably not worth the amount of time that people spend on them. For every successful one, there are many more that end up turning off hiring managers or making you look unoriginal or unprofessional. So if you must do try something creative, what I would say is, one, be relevant. It makes a lot more sense to do an infographic resume if you're a designer. Second, be original. Don't send them the shoe and tell them I already got one foot in the door. Every HR manager's heard that story, and it doesn't make you look good. And finally, be authentic. A video resume makes a lot more sense if you come across well on camera. Don't do it just to stick out. And that goes to a larger point, which is that ultimately the the day-to-day -day blocking and tackling of your job search may be boring, but it's the most effective use of your time. Now that you've spent just enough but not too much time on your application and submitted it, the real work begins. And this is a perfect example of where there are really no rules because you just have to judge every situation on its own merits and decide what the appropriate action is. The best thing you can do at this point is to get a referral. And the ideal situation is you want to find somebody who knows you, who knows the hiring manager, who will email them themselves, attach your resume and say, I recommend this person, you should hire them. But ultimately you take what you can get. Sometimes they may just give you the person's name or they may tell you you should apply and tell them you were referred by me and if that's what happens don't a don't ask them for more just thank them for the help that they gave you and move on and again you really have to evaluate it based on who the contact is and how well they know you and also how close they can get you to the hiring manager so but it always makes sense to use referrals no matter how many other different ways you've applied to this job because a referral is someone who can who carries weight by offering an endorsement as far as other channels what I would say is be really really careful because you can damage your your candidacy if you do it the wrong way for example if it's an online startup and you send in a print re a print version of your resume you may come across as looking a little bit dated and that can hurt your candidacy. And there are very few cases where it makes sense to, to call, to blindly call a person and leave a message for them, or, or even more awkwardly, get them on the phone and ask them about the status of your candidacy. You, you're really just likely to end up annoying the, the hiring manager and endangering your candidacy. So tread, and I'm not saying you should never do it, because all rules are made to be broken, but tread very carefully and, and really think whether this is something that's going to advance your candidacy in a way that it wouldn't otherwise. Here's some other questions that we frequently get here at Media Bistro and also that some people in, who are students in the Job Search Boot Camp wanted us to answer. One is, do you need to meet all the requirements listed in the job description? Again, this is another case where you really just have to use your judgment. I think a good rule of thumb is if you read through that job description and you feel like you can do the job, you should apply. Also note how the requirements are prioritized within the job description and how strong the language is. If the very first bullet point says must have X years of experience doing Y, that's a pretty good indication that they're going to place a big emphasis on that. On the other hand, if it's the last bullet and it says, you know, experience doing this preferred, you probably don't have to worry about it as much. There's a conspiracy theory I've, I've seen floating around. Thankfully, I don't see it as much now that the economy has improved a little bit. But it's that a certain percentage of job listings aren't even real. It's just companies putting it up there because they have to or in order to collect resumes. I'm not going to say it never happens, but it's pretty unlikely. For one thing, on a job board like Media Bistro, they're paying us money to post that job. So they're not going to do it 
just to get resumes or just to fulfill a requirement. It is a useful reminder, though, that you should always judge the credibility of the site. The more credibility the job board has, the more likely the jobs posted there are to be real. Then there's the dreaded salary question. Now, this is the quintessential example of how there's no rules. And anyone who tells you there is a rule about salary is wrong. Because there are times when you can cost yourself money by revealing that information too early. On the other hand, there are times when if you stonewall on that question, you can get your application tossed. So you have to judge each situation. I would say it's generally better to try to postpone that conversation until you know that there's a mutual level of interest. So it's better to have it come out during the interview than it is to tell them up front in your cover letter. You want to do as much research as possible. First of all, to know what salary range you really want and what you can afford to accept. And second of all, to know what this company might pay for that position. This is a good example where referrals can help. Uh, there's also websites like Glassdoor that can sometimes have that information, although you can't always trust what you read there. Another good thing to ask, if they ask you the salary question and you don't want to stonewall, is ask some questions about the job itself. For example, is it a new job or is it replacing someone who left? If it's replacing someone who left, they're more likely to have a specific range in mind, whereas if it's a new job, they might have more flexibility. If you feel the need to tell them your salary, and again, there's, there are times when it makes sense to do that, you want to reveal as little information as possible. For example, I would go for your desired salary rather than what you're currently making, because presumably you're interviewing for this job because you want to make more, and you don't want to set the negotiations at a point below what you're looking to make. But one thing I would say, if you tell them what you're making is never lie because that's something that can, even after you've gotten the offer, if they find out that you inflated the number, that can get them to rescind your offer. So that's why you're better off sticking with a range anyway because that's not something that you can lie about. If you tell them what you're looking to make, that's a true statement. Sometimes we see a job, we apply to it, and then a short time later we see it get reposted on the job board. And this really is... There's no rule as to why this happens. Sometimes it's really just a clerical thing. If, if you see a job get reposted 30 days after the initial posting, that's a good sign that it, it just got renewed, and it may not have even been intentional on the part of the employer. On the other hand, there are definitely times when an employer will repost a job because they're unsatisfied with the original candidate pool. So then the question is, do you reapply when you see it get reposted? And I would say that if you applied initially and never heard anything back from the company, you should absolutely reapply because they may not have even seen your original resume and it really can't hurt to reapply. On the other hand, if you're already interviewed for the job and you know you, did, you didn't get it, they rejected you, or you never heard back after the interview, then you, you've had your shot and you probably are part of that candidate pool that they weren't satisfied with. So it's probably best to just move on. Media Bistro doesn't have a resume database. And to be honest, we've never really had any demand for it, either from employers or from job seekers. So I'm not going to say they're not useful. I've just never found the use for them. And I think that's generally because employers don't really need to pay for a resume database when they can get more accurate, up-to-date information on LinkedIn for free. And job seekers, it's a big risk to put your information out there. Certainly if you're already employed, and even just from a privacy perspective, a resume might have your home address and your phone number, and you might not want to post that publicly. What should I spend my money on? Here, you really need to evaluate your own strengths and weaknesses and spend money if A, you have the budget, and B, you feel like that spending can make a difference. So, for example, if you're applying to lots of jobs and not getting any responses, or if you don't feel like you can express yourself well in writing, then you might want to look at having your resume or cover letters evaluated. And it just so happens that Media Obisha offers a great service to do this. On the other hand, if you're getting lots of interviews and not doing well, then you might want to look into interview coaching. One thing I would say that it's probably not worth paying for is premium services that charge you to view job listings. And the reason is I've never really seen much evidence that the jobs you find on those sites are different from the ones you can find on free sites. Now, if you, can, if you find a great service and 
you don't think those jobs are available elsewhere, that's great. But the fact is, an employer who posts on one of those sites can just as easily post on a, a site that can be viewed for free. So one good idea is if you find a job that title that you're interested in and it's behind a paywall, try Googling it and seeing if you can find that posted elsewhere for free. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. And if you have any other questions, please contact us and let us know. We're always here to help. Thanks.